Well, after season one, uh, the second season, which was also a season of Star Trek The Next Generation that I've always been harsh on, uh, started off with a rather disturbing <laughs> somewhat uh, episode called The Child. And uh, basically, uh, the Enterprise has to run on impulse power for a while, so it's a little extra slow uh, before they could take off at warp again. And as they do, some strange entity of pure energy, pure energy, pure energy, uh, comes along and uh, slips into the ship and seeks out, ultimately, uh, Deanna Troy, I guess because of her empathic abilities or something along those lines. And uh, <laughs> they literally show it goes under. She's sleeping in her quarters. It goes under the covers. <laughs> you can see it glowing through the, through the sheet. And <laughs> disappears into, hey, I wonder what. And then she's like, oh, she wakes up looking around all confused and stuff. And then later on, not not much later on, <laughs> we find out, well, she's pregnant. <laughs> so, um, so uh, and then it's <laughs> there's this awkward moment where uh, and they introduced the new doctor. This is when uh, Gates McFadden uh, left the show, apparently. Uh, I forget the whole backstory to it. Uh, but of course, eventually she comes back. But here, they still have Wesley on the ship. And it's like, what's he still doing there? Mommy's gone. <laughs> uh, and then ultimately he says, I want to stay on the ship, sir. And for whatever reason, Picard decides, well, all right. You can stay on the ship. So anyway, but they have uh, a, a, you know a conference with all the command staff, you know, and the doctor goes, "Well, she's pregnant, and boy, is she really far along, you know." <laughs> and of course, Will's like, "What the hell?" He's <laughs> like, "Well, who's the father?" And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, Deanna. <laughs> Uh, but it becomes clear this is not ordinary as the, the rapid gestation period uh, was in a matter of minutes, really, uh, you know, maybe an hour or two. And then eventually she gives birth. And then the, the boy uh, grows very fast. And uh, essentially, ultimately, the whole thing is that this alien entity was trying to understand uh, humanity or humanoids and decided, I know, I'll become one uh, through this virgin birth, if you will. Well, obviously, probably Deanna's not. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, was not conceived in the usual way. And so he was his own father in that aspect. <laughs> and uh, for the briefest amount of time, he's existing uh, as this child, uh, rapidly growing, uh, and then along the way, oh, he becomes this threat that they're uh, dealing with uh, transporting this, uh, to uh, well, toxic or uh, not toxic, but uh, volatile and stable material and whatnot. And then he says, I'm the threat, Mommy, so I have to go. And so, you know, uh, he seemingly dies and then he's back to being a glowing light and uh, flies away. It, there really wasn't a whole lot to it. Other than, well, here you are experiencing this uh, strange form of life that uh, you wouldn't ordinarily uh, recognize. And it reached out in order to understand them, and this is how it did it. Uh, but, uh, boy, what, talk about putting her through the ring, you know, <laughs> and all that. But uh, it... it it, to me, it kind of fell flat in that that it just kind of ran out of steam and it was just this incident. Uh, but on the other hand, I kind of appreciate the effort of trying to uh, what the possibilities are in a truly alien existence in outer space and what could you encounter and all that and how something uh, that is capable of it would cross over into to try to understand another species by becoming that species. Um, and uh, some aspects of it kind of reminds me of the Starman movie. And then, of course, you can go to the whole concept of, well, what supposedly happened with Jesus and all that sort of thing uh, in that, uh, you know, is this 
uh, a god in human form and all that. Uh, but uh, and so th- there's elements of that in it uh, uh, suggested by uh, the circumstance. But ultimately, other than you know Councillor Troy crying again a lot, <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot to it uh, beyond that. Likewise, the follow-up uh, episode where silence has lease, where they, once again they encounter a strange entity who uh, is not familiar with uh, uh, the human species, or I suppose humanoid, rather, since there are non-human beings on the ship, most notably a wharf. Uh, but nevertheless, and to some extent, uh, uh, Councillor Troy again, uh, I, I, they're they're cruising along they find this anomaly in it where hey look it's a black hole thingy only it's not a black hole it's i don't know maybe a wormhole or it's just something and boy a no star uh, fleet ship has ever encountered anything like this which really isn't true i mean in the original series when they ended up taking on that giant amoeba but at first it was within this eerie black hole looking thing <laughs> It was very similar, so I don't know. But this was uh, very different as uh, they go into it and fall right for the trap. (laughs) And then they can't get back out. No matter how fast or far they go, they cannot escape this whatever it is. And then eventually uh, they begin to realize there's an intelligence at work. They start uh, experiencing... uh, uh, mirages of uh, Romulan ships and then a, a, a sister a Starfleet ship uh, that Worf and uh, Riker actually beam onto it and then uh, end up it was it's all weird uh, the, the bridge isn't where it's supposed to be then they open a door and they're back it's it leads them to yet another bridge and, and then they start seeing uh, each other it, it, it's warping all space and reality for them and then eventually uh, well they beam back before the ship disappears and uh, so on and so forth and then finally the entity reveals itself to them and says oh well, this is fascinating I'm studying you and all this stuff uh, it ends up killing uh, one of the crewmen just to see uh, what happens. Oh, you guys can die. That's interesting, you know. And Picard is like, "This is outrageous. You can't do this to us." And uh, so eventually, decides, "Well, if uh, the entity won't let us go and it's just toying with us, we'll destroy the ship." So they do the, you know, the self-destruct sequence, similar to you know the original series and all that. And they go through with it, and uh, the entity. Uh, tries to trick him uh, assuming the forms of Data and and Troy, trying to talk him out of it. He doesn't fall for it. Uh, Then suddenly they're out of the void and they're in space and Picard uh, says, let's get the warp out of here. And so they they do and then he decides well we're safe enough based on what I don't know. And uh, decides to to, to cancel the self-destruct sequence and then the entity uh, Skypes in on his (laughs) on his laptop (laughs) And uh, this is, wow, human species uh, has, is very different from our own or whatever. And uh, But then Picard says, you're just as curious as we are. And, uh, oh, yeah, I guess you got me there, and then disappears. A- again, I, it just sort of fizzles. It's There's not much of a story here that's just, a, you know, we're trapped, we don't know how to get out. And they get out because... I don't know, the alien entity, the godlike alien entity <laughs> just lets them go. Uh, for the most part, like godlike entities were a common uh, thing that happened in the original series. And then uh, for Next Generation, primarily that role is uh, it, it's Q. You know, he, he does, he plays that role in it and becomes more and more significant as the show continues. Uh, but there were others, and this is kind of an example of that. Uh, and to some extent, even the previous episode with the child, I, I would suggest, is some some of that. In that it's so far beyond uh, the human experience uh, in, uh, in what its intentions were. So anyway, it, somewhat interesting concepts that are uh, tried to be explored here, but I don't think they really land in either one of them. Um, yeah, but and that's 
Well, that's about it. There's really not much else uh, there. Uh, but, you know, I, I can appreciate the attempt. And one of the things I always come back to, uh, despite the, the what I perceive as weak and lackluster to the uh, first two seasons of Next Generation, is that there was a sci-fi concept uh, there, and they, they tried to pursue it uh, as best they could. Uh, the interactions between the cast is getting better and all that's good. Uh, you get the new Doctor, which was a bit jarring at the time, and they just say, oh, oh, Beverly's got some new job somewhere. And, uh, oh, well, Wesley was supposed to go there. Uh, somehow she forgot to take him. <laughs> and, uh, well, he's decided to hang out here with the boys. Uh, and then Will Riker has decided to grow some hair on his face, which uh, apparently uh, he never shaves that beard. I don't think he ever. Maybe he did later on. But I don't know Jonathan Frakes <laughs> He's had that beard ever since. Uh, but anyway, of course, the new doctor, uh, Dr. Pulaski, uh, was uh, this actress who played several, a couple of roles in the original series, you know. Uh, and now uh, she's the old doctor. And, <laughs> and that pretty much derailed uh, the insinuation of this, uh, you know, romantic connection between Picard and Beverly and they never really came back to it even when she rejoined the show there was elements of it there was you know occurrences between them uh, here and there but uh, they never really did anything with it until you know the Picard season 3 thing um, but kind of too late uh, the movies should have made some attempt at that but uh, didn't uh, so but uh, now with uh, Dr. Pulaski, uh, that's, uh, well, not really in the cards. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there we go. The Child and uh, where uh, Silence uh, has lease. Um, well, it was silent for a while, and then all the stuff started happening. Anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, not off to a great start for the second season, but... Uh, re-watching these, I'm sure I'll end up in the same position I did with the first season where I grew to have more respect for it than I used to. And It's been a while since I'd watched them and uh, re-watching them. Uh, you know, uh, some of these shows were actually pretty good. Uh, so, but these two, you know, you know, I'm not mad at them or anything like that, but I just didn't find them to uh, deliver fully uh, on that. But anyway, there we go. Child and uh, where uh, silence has lease. <laughs> 